Good morning, everybody. It's your second, maybe third, favorite flannel-wearing YouTuber. I'm Amalgam Ash, and welcome back to the channel. This is A Road to Awe. This is a game made in RPG in a box. Itself an engine created entirely within the Godot engine. So this is like the grandchild of the Godot engine. Uh, but going forward, I will definitely refer to any and all games made with RPG in a box as games made with RPG in a box. This game was made by Electronice. Electronice? I'm not entirely sure on the pronunciation of the handle. So for that, I apologize. Uh, but this has been out for a hot minute. And it's something that I kind of wanted to take a look at. Oh. Yes, hello. The road, the, 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 the road has begun. Forward we go. Oh, oh god, oh god. Oh god. What what happens? Maybe oh, okay, hi. Ah, I see, I see, I see, okay. Woof. I don't know what the mouse was supposed to do. Whoop. Is this Ah uh huh, uh huh. I can do this by myself, thank you. It does not appear as though I have control over my character. Okay, now I do. It's bizarre. <laughs> Clicking it seems to advance me. Ah, but only if I click on the road. Okay, when I clicked on that road, that my character is trying to autopath. I gotcha. So they autopath, and then I click. And it doesn't work like that. The clicking seems to have stopped. Oh, and so have I. They won't let me go. They will not let me go. Oh my gosh, the controls. I think this was meant to be more of an experience than a game. And that's totally fine. But, I need to be going, guys. Uh-huh, uh-huh, okay. Interesting, interesting. Will that reset for me? No. I need to walk. None of my keys work. Ugh. Maybe we should... Hold on. Let's try that again. This time we're only going to use the... Not the mouse at all. Well, I am definitely in awe. So, yes, as I was saying... RPG in a Box is an engine, a fully complete standalone engine made by Justin Arnold. I say standalone because you can use it without Godot. Uh, I'll leave a link in the description below to the RPG in a Box Discord as well as the itch page where you can purchase it for yourself if you'd like to support the development of it. It's capable of a lot more than this. Uh, from what I can see, it doesn't seem to be entirely a very basic drag-and-drop type engine. There does seem to be a lot of dependency on you being able to code if you want some advanced events, but there does seem to be a lot of assets already kind of available Whoa. so that you can Oh, I couldn't see I don't know how to make my camera look up and down. Well, that's the strafe. There were no instructions that came with this. I'm gonna blindly walk ahead. Here we go. Actually, that worked out just fine. Sure hope I don't die. You know, I'll be able to go up the stairs a lot easier than I went down them. Yeah, I think this was definitely supposed to be an experience but it does give me an idea of some of the 
distance, the draw distance, rendering capabilities of the engine, I don't know how much control over that we as the devs have when we are making our games. But you can hear the music, you can see that the environments are unique from one another. Yes, there is uh, definitely some similarity in between, but I should point out as well that the engine seems to make uh, lots of different kinds of games. So it's going to be kind of dependent on your skill. Uh, but right now, they are all somewhat basic in terms of games that are RPGs. But being able to, to seeing this, this multi-level level and, and seeing that they're multi-level level and seeing that I can walk underneath platforms and things that that uh, that is sorely sorely needed in the templated game making scene that's something that you know RPG maker MV I think you've got four layers and you have to rig those in such a way that your character would be utilizing all four of them uh, rather than them just being graphical but RPG Maker MZ, not that I really want to compare this with those because they're not at all the same kinds of engines. They're definitely, definitely different tools. But by that same token, the, uh, the purpose of them is to make a game, right? So there is comparison in terms of what's the engine offer uh, for my needs for the needs that I have as a game developer. And so, just in terms of comparing for that reason, MZ has, I believe, eight layers. So a little bit easier to kind of determine uh, for the player or the dev that you've got different layers to interact with. I don't think they have to be graphical. You can, you can definitely rig them to be things that are layers uh, with which you can interact. Now having said that, an old engine that I used to use, RPG Toolkit, which I, I very recently became reacquainted with, is now called RPG, well, it's still called RPG Toolkit, but it hasn't been updated in about 10 years. And that makes me very sad because Toolkit was a, a great little engine for me and that's going to be story time for another day but being free and open source it was uh, forked by one dedicated user who rebranded the tool as RPG Wizard and RPG Wizard is available and it is free and it supports eight layers as well but RPG Toolkit has supported eight layers for two decades so the feat of supporting two layers is nothing in particular uh, impressive. That said, this is the kind of layer support that I would like to see. This is not really layers, it's a world that you can build. There might be some inherent invisible layer, one block high, something arbitrary like that that's going on. But it's easier for you as the developer to make that invisible to the player so that they're not just playing another game made in XYZ engine. So I think that this was meant to be completed fairly quickly. And yeah, it is, it is strictly tech demo slash experience. And uh, I'll probably be leaving it here shortly. I'll go ahead and complete this since I have just a little bit more to talk about. Um, because I was going to compare SGB as well, Smile Game Builder's layering capability. Smile Game Builder's layering capability is a bit more difficult to rig, but you can essentially have almost unlimited layers within that engine as well. 
you have to be proficient in uh, setting up your collision with objects that you import and then whoop, did I I figured it out yeah and if you can do that you can set objects I think on top of one another that statement may be false I'm pretty sure you can set objects on top of one another and you can walk on top of objects and you can walk underneath them so as long as you can stack them you have multiple layers uh, if you can't stack objects on top of each other you can still create bridges from ledge to ledge and you can have those ledges at different heights so long story short you can rig smile game builder in order to have layers kind of similar to this I don't know how easy it is to make something like this because as of right now I still haven't played with RPG in a box myself and I don't like to cover games really without whoops that didn't work out right without taking a look at the engine and its capabilities but I have a feeling that would be very time consuming in this case. So uh, we need the middle of that road. Is it just, it's in darkness. I see it now. And then that's it. We're gonna make it to the middle of the stairs and we're gonna be done. There may be more to this, but at this point, I think I've driven the point home. And for me, the experience has been had and the ultimate goal here in playing games is to leave something behind so that you will want to experience it for yourself as well. Now this one might be a little bit niche, it's not for everybody, it's not for everybody to go out and try to pursue and want to experience it. Might seem a bit limited and it is. Oh, I think we made it to the end. I'll give this one more shot. But uh, for me, it was worth trying out because right now, the amount of games made with this engine is very small. There's not very many. There are only about eight, uh, by my count, that are published. There's a, a small number of them that are talked about and in development, if the devs are still actively working on them. And those games are, you know, I hope that they go somewhere. They, they have seen screenshots, and they look like... They're, uh, they're having exciting things done with them in this engine that made me definitely want to play around with this thing. But time will tell. So hopefully I've drummed up some interest. RPG in a box. That's all one word. No spaces. And yeah, it was made in Godot, and I think the goal was really to make something that would allow you, the dev who wishes to have a product where you don't need to code anything, a solution to make a game without having to use Godot. And that's a noble solution, so that's it for this one. Check it out, leave a link in the description below, and thank you for watching. I'm going to cover more RPG in a box games. They're not going to be quite like this one. Like I, like I said over and over, this one was an experience. So uh, we've experienced it. We're going to move on. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video. Until then, bye-bye.